The hour is late, yet Hilma is still wide awake. Her sleeping schedule has been somewhat disrupted. The portal storm last night kept her up through most of the day and night. It's always difficult to tell the time during those storms, as the sky kind of disappears. But she and everyone else in Hopetown managed to survive the harrowing experience. And now they work diligently to improve the town and to get Hilma closer to building that steam engine. At the end of the last episode, we were attempting to create a new battery for our makeshift welder. The battery that we did take out of it, we should actually be able to disassemble and get the shell back for. And that is something that I forgot. And so that should make the process of making the new one just that much easier. We are oh so close to getting to that level four in mechanics. Let's cross our fingers and hope we can get there today, Hilma. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here and welcome back to Cataclysm in a Wood, where we are here with Hilma and the gang. And the very first thing that we are going to do this evening is jump into here and we're going to have a search for... Uh, let's see, bat. We're looking for the battery. It's going to take five minutes for us to take it apart, and we are going to get a medium battery shell back for doing that. Excellent. Now, I think we are still going to need some sugar, but that's at least one step done that we don't need to worry about anymore. And if we jump back in and have a look at medium bat again, that's a medium battery bot. Okay, so let's try a different angle. Ah, it's a medium dry battery. So the reason this version here doesn't take as long is because of the battery shell which we already have so we come back to those carbon electrode rods and the acidic electrolyte paste we know that we need sugar for the electrode rod but for the acidic uh, electrolyte paste we just need hydrochloric acid when we craft this just once we get a thousand of it so we get we get a fair amount Having a look at acids, hydrochloric acid, we just need salt water. And, oh, oh, <laughs> that's, that's a problem. Oh, there are other recipes, right, okay, there are. Okay, yes, good, good, good. That's probably the direction that we want to go. Uh, it would be great if we had our makeshift welder. We do not have an electrolysis kit that has charges, and we don't have an arc welder that has charges. Although, although in saying that, we might... Well, no, the whole purpose here is that we need to recharge our welder. I don't think we have batteries in anything else. That is really our only battery, other than the massive battery that we have attached to this here. And that's a that's an entirely different thing. Rechargeable batteries would be nice, though, if we could have some kind of recharging mod. But that's, that's complex electronics. I don't think that's something that we have a good control on just yet. So the main thing for this second recipe is sulfuric acid and salt and then we just need to have a smoker or you know just a nearby fire but for this we need salt we know where our salt is it's in the kitchen but sulfuric acid is what we are after and we actually have everything we need to be able to make that sulfuric acid we only need one and this is going to give us one hydrochloric acid which i think was enough for the paste yes indeed it is okay so we're going to need to grab 210 salt and for the sulfuric acid we just need to be near a fire so the salt comes first and it should just be here mm, how much do we need again we needed 200 something right now we do have a lot of rock salt so we probably have the ability to get enough salt we're going to leave that there for now and just see what we can do with the rock salt that we brought back with us all right, so if we are in this general area, we should be okay. Yeah, excellent. All we need is for the fire to be on, and that's going to give us 100 salt. So we just do this twice. It is going to take a little bit longer for us to do that. Oh, actually, no. Maybe maybe we want to try to do like all the rock salt at once because we get a, a fair time save from doing this. So let's go start this fire. Thankfully, no one was standing in the fire. <laughs> and having a look at salt here we should be able to make 400 units of salt in about the same time that it would take us to make one. And there we go. We had the others assisting us with that crafting process. We got our hot salt. Now that we got that, let's head back to acids and let's have a look at the sulfuric acid. Nice. So all we need for the sulfuric acid now is clean water. 
And we just need one clean water. Okay, <laughs> back to the kitchen. Let's go fill up our drinking receptacle, also known as a water skin Rikon. <laughs> there we go, clean water. Let's pour that into our large sealed stomach and let's just make our way back down. Okay, that should be the lot. Indeed it is, sulfuric acid. Let's get you on the go. Uh, we probably should have had something to put that in. We, we have something. Let's put it in the sealed stomach. Sure, why not? That's, that's safe. Again, I think we've talked about this. The sealed stomach might actually be good for it. And now, hydrochloric acid. What a chemist we are, eh? Right? Done. We're going to put that into the sealed stomach. And now we should be able to make the acidic electrolyte paste. Excellent. And that, that can just go anywhere. We're wielding that currently. And we can see that we indeed have everything that we're going to need to be able to make this other than of course the carbon electrode rod now how much sugar did we need to make those so we need about six sugar okay and ah we might actually need a little bit more in the way of charcoal sure so we've got quite a bit of splintered wood just up in this position here we should have some down there as well we're going to take all that splintered wood which I, th oh, okay, th there is enough of it there. Uh, we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it into these charcoal kilns just to get those going now. Because we wanna make sure that we pretty much always have a really good supply of the stuff. Let's just shift to the side here. Wow, that takes a long ass time. Probably shouldn't have done that, but here we are. Oh, look at that, 3000 charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I guess we were good and we remembered to, we got 6,000 charcoal. Okay, I'm glad that we uh, did that. Thank you, Past Hilma. Let's be grateful. Uh, and we're going to go and refuel those again pretty much right away. So putting as much of that into here as we can. 500, excellent. Takes a little while for us to do that. The rest of it we're just going to drag up one square. And then we're going to swap with Arturo and we'll go and shift that into this one. Okay, all right. The kiln is empty. Okay, right, <laughs> wrong spot. There we go, last time moving things around. Fire that kiln, fire that kiln. Okay. We're hungry yet again. Uh, we'll try and save the lard eating until <laughs> the evening. And don't worry, we will get into eating some better food again very very soon we actually do have a little bit of harvesting that can be done out there it looks like it's just for garlic right yes sugar let's focus on the sugar next i am most certainly wanting to do a bit of a harvest today but we'll just see if we can you know work with what we've already got we do have some sugar beet in there okay and we can get sugar from honeydew that's good we need some lye powder for that recipe though Ah, sugar beet syrup. Okay, and all that we'd need for sugar beet syrup is uh, just some heat. And of course some water too. Now it would make sense to do that kind of cooking in here, but we've got everything back on over in the other spot for now, so we'll just go and grab that. And we're going to take what's left of that clean water, we're going to bring that over with us. Actually in saying that, we should probably just take the water, because then we can heat up the rest that's there. Yeah, let's go that route. So we'll take that, we'll drag it along with us, we'll get moving. Okay, so we can put the clay pot like directly into the fire, just so that it can start to become clean water. But for now, theoretically, we should have everything we need to process this sh sugar beet. Indeed, we... no, we don't. <laughs> okay, nearby fire. Do we... ah, the fire went out. Of course it did, of course it did. There we go, new one in there, let's start that fire. Okay, that's better. Sugar beet syrup. And we can make four lots of the stuff. We'll do it, and we'll use the water that's in the fireplace at the moment. And that is thirsty work, so we'll make sure that we drink after this. Pour that into that sealed stomach. Thank you, water. And now we should be able to get sugar from that syrup and it looks like we should be able to get I was gonna say an okay amount but I could be wrong here oh the result is 22 okay so we get 22 sugar from 10 sugar beet syrup we can do this three times which we are most certainly going to do okay 
done and dusted. We really need to sort out everything that's here. That's 66 sugar. And now if we head back and have a look at those rods, we can make them. Excellent. So we want to try and make four in total. Uh, we need more clean water now, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do. Well, we do have some water in the fire that is going to be uh, done soon. We might be able to speed up that process though. Although in saying that, it's going to take us uh, actually not that long to do it. Let's just say six. We are obviously using all of our pots and pans to do all of this. We have them stored up in the main locker up the top right. Pour that water into there. There is still some left over. Oh, interesting. I guess we'll pour it on the ground, just down to the side. Weird. And we need four of these. Okay, we are going to be able to get this done. Excellent. Okay, I think, I think that's everything that we needed to be able to continue with the craft. Oh, right, no. Well, we needed to make the battery first, so <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Medium dry battery. Yes, indeed, we do have everything. That's only going to take us 20 minutes and 21 seconds. Oh, now we're tired. Yeah, of course. Well, uh, we want to try and finish this off as quickly as possible because we were on 69 mechanics. We still are. That's good. But if we go to sleep, I'm afraid that that'll start to change. So uh, we are going to reload our welder now because uh, we should have that medium battery. Makeshift arc welder. There we go. Excellent. And now we're going to activate the vehicle controls, which we had nearly finished making. And there we go. Okay. We have vehicle controls now. Proper working vehicle controls. And where did that put us at the end of that? Um, let's see. Mechanics, 75%. So I think if we try and install that onto a vehicle, then we should be good. Examine vehicle. Okay. Vehicle control. Yeah, I mean, there's controls. Okay. 37 minutes only requires two mechanics. So... What I'm thinking, here's the other thing. If we have anything that we can install that requires three mechanics, we would be okay. But I honestly, I don't remember seeing it. Oh, I lie. A welding rig. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to happen. A washing machine. That, that also isn't going to happen. No, none of those engines. Spiked plating is a maybe. There's a lot of resources to go and make something like that. What I'm hoping is that just in general, Adding something to the vehicle will help. Plastic boat hull. Boat hull? Okay, so what if just adding one of the other hulls would help? Metal boat hull. Mechanic off, oh, right, of course, yeah. We can do the plastic one. It's the aluminum one that we're actually wanting to put on there. But a plastic boat hull. I didn't actually think about it, but we, we have access to, potentially, a very, very large amount of plastics. The mold is the tricky part, I think, when it comes to plastics. But with all of the chitin that we've been able to collect, yeah, we, we can get a fair amount of plastic. Okay, I think we're going to install this. We should be able to take it off easy as. But um, yeah, the idea is to install it to try and see if this will help our mechanics improve. Oh, the sun is about to rise. That's unfortunate. Okay, done. We've got vehicle controls on there now. You install... Oh, right, we called it the Titanic, that's right. Um, is it still going to be the same? It, it, it is, it is, okay. Hmm. My next question would be, can we take apart the controls? So let's go back to this first of all. We're going to remove these controls here. Only takes two mechanics to remove them, and I think it was two to install them as well. Um, let's go turn off this light. We are definitely going to be going to sleep very soon, but... Uh, yeah, the other option would be to try and stay up the whole day, which is... Mm, we're weary at the moment. We could we could maybe manage it. Um, okay, we're going to need a little bit more light than that, but we'll see if we are possibly able to take apart these controls. Indeed, we can. Okay, it's 15 minutes. Theoretically, we would get everything we need back from them. I really hope so. Let's try. Okay. Okay, so the only thing that we wouldn't have gotten back from that is the power that we used. But we can make it again. Ah, we're at 80 now. So yeah, I'm a little afraid to go to sleep because I just don't want us to lose progress. At the same time, our focus is starting to slip. So we're not going to be learning as well. But in saying that, I mean, we made it all the way up to 80% making that. What if we try it again, eh? Okay, well, what are we missing? 
Okay, we are missing some things. The four set of pipe fittings. Do we not have them at all? No. Uh, okay, so we've got a fair amount of scrap metal. So we are going to be able to remake many of these parts. It's just going to take a little bit. And because we've already done that process, I am going to speed through that a little bit. Just so we're not dicking around all day. But I think, Hilma, it would be wise for us to get some sleep now. We'll gamble. And then when we awake, we will carry on. Oh, <laughs> Hi, sorry, I'm back. Uh, I just double checked. Uh, they are actually able to furnish the pantry now. So we're going to get pretty much everyone involved on that to make it super fast. Probably, probably don't need to send everybody to do that. Uh, but I think it does help. Five hours and 20 minutes. Okay, well, we'll see how much of that we are going to be sleeping. Well, hi, we're back. It's been a run about eight hours in game, <laughs> not, not in real life, uh, since we've been able to make these vehicle controls. The thing that took the longest was the set of pipe fittings. It was like seven hours to work on all of them. It's quite a lot of work, but this should be it. We have enough charges in the makeshift arc welder to be able to do it. Um, just having a look at our mechanics. Let's see where that is at right now. It's at 80% still, so it didn't actually decay, which is fantastic. This. This should do it for us. Okay, control time. Here we go. Hilma, we believe in you. And we're going fast. There we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Our theoretical and our practical knowledge is good. We screwed up. <laughs> That's so annoying. But the main thing is uh, we, we actually are able to install the aluminium frames and everything else like that now which is fantastic i think what we're going to have to try and do is figure out a better way to power our arc welder if we can somehow you know get it rigged into our like our battery system that we've got here that would be fantastic but uh okay let's open up our crafting and just see what that has done for us we have but one thing in electronics so let's see what we the makeshift vacuum mold. Okay. Okay. But yeah, the main thing is that we can actually install on here now. If we have a look. Yep. There we go. Aluminum boat hull. Excellent. That's good to see. We can also do the metal one, but we can see that that's 6 kgs while this is 2.2. So a lot better and potentially maneuverable with wind power. Although here's the thing, sailing down a river only really works if we have a good day with good wind. The main thing, the main thing, is going to be focusing on the steam engine. And oh boy, is that going to be a lot of work. A lot of work. But hey, it's, it's what we do best. So having a look at this here, the first thing that I see we are going to need is a lot of pipes. I think it would also be a good idea to have a look and see if we need other things as well as those. The steel chains, all of that stuff we can do. I feel like we've got enough steel to do this. It, it looks like a lot. Steel plating, the steel frame. There's a lot of steel going into this. Mechanical pumps and the makeshift air filter are two things that I want to have a look at now. So let's start with the air filter. Okay, we're going to have to be a little bit more direct with that. Right, just a plastic bottle or a medium tin can. Yeah, see... <laughs> that's the problem we can make the makeshift vacuum mold now it's just a it's a it's a big process so i think we'd stand a better chance with the tin cans but can we make a tin can we can <laughs> we can make the can we actually have everything that we need to be able to make that then yeah yeah we actually have everything to be able to make the air filter as is now which is really good okay that's fantastic next thing that we would want to have a look at is the mechanical pumps Okay, mechanical pump is just pipes? Okay, yeah, and we need two of those. And I think that was one pipe in there. So we're gonna need roughly between 18 to 20 pipes in total. We might wanna make sure that we have some extra pipes. So 20, 20 is a good number for us to work with. So going off of that, if we jump on over here, we'll see exactly what we are going to need to be able to get those pipes done. So it's going to be scrap metal for the pipes, sure. And it's roughly seven, well not roughly, it is seven scrap metal to make a single pipe. 
The tricky thing is that this just adds a bit more time to our process to do it this way. The alternative would be having a look to see if the basic pipe recipe, which uses chunks of steel, okay, and it takes two hours to do. Right. Because yeah, one chunk of steel is going to give us five scrap metal. So it is more efficient for us to do it this way. I think in terms of time, it'll still work out pretty good. So if we have a look at the chunks of steel that we've got, 15 minutes, it definitely makes sense for us to do it this way. Ah, uh, we are going to disassemble five to start with. We can batch craft three. Yeah, we're gonna need, <laughs> we're gonna need a lot more, a lot more scrap metal. Okay, sure. So that's all of the chunks converted into scrap metal for the time being. And that gives us six pipes. Okay, fine. <laughs> Pony, let's get you working on that and see exactly how long that's going to take you. An hour and 12 minutes, that's great. Looks like Ramshackle and Sherry are done with some of their crafting. Okay, good stuff. Oh, we haven't actually checked the pantry yet as well, since we upgraded it. And now we've only got four more upgrades to do to the canteen. We still need a, a well there. Salt water tanks. The brewery racks. Oh man, the pipes, the pipes. But yeah, if we could get the brewery racks and the vats, oh boy, that'd be nice. Because just to be able to brew booze, like, not automatically, but be a, to be able to do it through this makes a massive difference. We should also make sure that we get some more pies made just while we are, you know, here. We'll use some of that water. Cheryl, hop to it, eh? Yeah, these vats wouldn't be that difficult for us to achieve. So the 72 small metal sheets, we've got 12 at the moment. We've actually got a fair few like large metal sheets. I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but it's still part of what we're trying to get done here. We get 24 from just taking apart one lot. Okay, I've already forgotten how much we need it. <laughs> but we'll take apart just the one to begin with. Okay, so we're gonna need a little bit more than what we did. And then we need five more water faucets. Yeah, that is enough sheets. Okay, the faucets, what would we need for you? <laughs> of course, of course it's pipes and pipe fittings. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Pipes. Oh, so many pipes we are in need of. All right, let me just check to see if there isn't a better method for us to get scrap metal from like, you know, crafting. No, okay, it is just gonna be from cutting stuff down. Okay, all right, so it's gonna be a bit labor intensive for us to do this because we still have lots of lumps of steel. The lumps give us chunks, and those chunks give us scrap. I think the most important thing for me to realize throughout all of this is that this is not going to be a quick project. This is going to take us a while. Not only are we going to be able to work on the boat, but we're also going to be able to work on completing this township. And so I think, <laughs> I think we need to be prepared. We're about to go into another winter. I think we're going to need to go out there and we're going to need to harvest a lot to make sure that we have enough fruit to be able to make it through the winter. The hunting side of things, I think we'll wait until winter just because food keeps so much better in the winter. But yeah, I think I think that'll be the plan. Let's just check on our cookers and see how they're doing. Okay, all right, that's good. Cheryl, you're back with the flatbreads. And Pony is back with some pipes. Thank you, Pony. Oh, the pies are frozen at the moment. Yeah, I think we've actually got a few of them kicking around here. But yeah, I, what we're going to try and do, I'm going to see if we can get to sleep now. It is still the evening. I know we're not that tired, but we, yeah, <laughs> we're going to need the daylight to be able to do some proper harvesting. We'll turn off the overhead lights for now. I think it would be wise for us to get everyone to assist us with moving things around. And I'll also see if there's any other jobs that we can get them doing overnight. Ah, the chain is something that we can get them working on though, can't we? Yeah, okay, all right. Steam engine, we needed to have four steel chains. That's a fair bit of work, but with a drop hammer, it's going to be a lot faster. It's gonna use a, f oh, it's using a lot of our steel. It needs to be done though. Pony, we very much appreciate you. So I've actually sent out Arturo and Lysandra. Lysandra to go and hunt larger animals and Arturo to hunt smaller game. They are both pretty well protected. Arturo knows the woods very well, and he's very quick on his feet. Lysandra is just, in general, one of the best fighters that we've got. 
and she has a decent marksmanship skill which is necessary for this. So I hope they perform well, we'll be able to check back in on them in the morning. As for everyone else, I think we are going to need to look at making another house. There's so many of them here now, it'll make sense to have more than just the one building. So we're going to be adding this in here. And we can pretty much, we can very nearly get all of them working on it. So, that'll keep them busy. 7 hours and 39 minutes. As for the others, a little bit of menial labour, just to help tidy things up. Well, things are looking much, much tidier in here. I like that. And it looks like, wow, okay, they were done with that uh, log room really quite quickly. Are we able to work on the next section of that? Oh, they just did it all in one, and now it's just the straw beds. Yeah, sure. Use the sticks, though, eh? And we can pretty much send everyone on that again. I think we want to try and keep Lacandra around, though. Although, with everyone working on this, it's going to help improve their fabrication, and it's also not going to take them as long to work on it. Yeah, 13 minutes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they'll be done very quickly. Uh, Arturo. Let's see. See, these are the things that can be a little dangerous, sending them out to hunt. Uh, we'll get Pony back with the smithing. Let's see, you've got those steel chains. Excellent work, sir. Now, trappers. Um, let's actually go to the other position, because I think that's going to be easier to just deal with bodies. So, Arturo, how did it go? Okay, small animals, what did you get? Two black rats, a fox, and a weasel. Excellent work, sir. And Lysandra. Okay, what do we have here? Um, and where is Lysandra? Oh, Lysandra. Uh, hang on a second, I'm confused. What's going on here? Examine the terrain. Yep, where? Hmm, that's strange. Oh, you popped in over there. I see, I see. Okay, well, let's go check over there and see, see what's up. Do we have any animals around? Not that I can see. You returned, you had experience, right? So... Theoretically, they, they should be there. Unless we do have some folks that have been sorting things out. There is a small chance. You see that we've actually got the soil out the side here now. That's very handy. No, there's no bodies on there. Okay, interesting. I'm just looking on the other side. Strawberry seeds and some straw. Okay, well, at the very least, we did get some things out of that. So, with this Lysandra there... Let's take the bodies over to that position. And, well, I suppose we can butcher them ourselves, right? Full butchery. Okay, and we're looking pretty good. We've got offal, we've got some fat. It's not a huge amount of meat by any means, but it's, it's, an, it's an all right amount. And that should still be counted as being within range of everything. So I wanna see if we can do some cooking. Indeed, we can. We can actually make some meat jerky. Easily enough, we could use black powder. That's very interesting. We can also make some meat pies and smoked meat pies. Honestly? Oh no, sorry. That's just smoked meat. Of course, of course. I'm kind of interested in the uh, the meat jerky option. So we'll start with that one. Make four lots of that. We'll use some of the seasoned salt because that sounds nicer. And Pony, we'll get you to help out with that. He seems to be a bit of a cook. Oh, and everyone's done with the straw beds. So we'll go and bring them back and we can see that we indeed do have another little house here another little home which is great and i think just like the other we'll probably be able to put the ha ha uh, a fireplace in here okay <laughs> i guess i guess i had a medical spot set up here that i just didn't realize that's that's a lot of bandages okay Cool. Good to know that they're there. Those are all boiled? Yeah, boiled makeshift bandages. Okay, how many do we have on ourselves at the moment? Eight. That's a reasonable amount to have. Okay, um, yeah. See, when you've been doing this for over 100 episodes, it's very easy to forget uh, some basic things. <laughs> okay, I want to have a look at the rest of the stuff here. Hang on a second. Central building. We haven't had the central building. Can act as a kitchen and dining hall. Well, we, we have one of those. We have a full dining hall and everything up here with the canteen. So we don't need to build two of those. 
It looks like we can make some more jerky. It would probably be using uh, the scraps of meats rather than the, the chunks of meat. So we'll do that. We can make one, apparently. Uh, ramshackle, thank you. Honestly, having a well in the kitchen would make a big difference for us as well. Haha. <laughs> and it just needs a mechanical pump. Which we might actually have everything we need for that. We do need the mechanical pump. We need two of them, I believe, for the steam engine. But we might be able to make that so they can get a well going. The only thing that we're lacking is scrap metal or chunks of steel. We can get the six chunks of steel easily enough, as we know, by popping on over here. I'm going to our lumps. So we get four from each. So we're just going to need to take apart two of them. That's two hours though, unfortunately. I really wanted to go out today. The sunlight is dying. So let's get this light on. There we go. And we might as well jump in our seat now. Make the process comfortable. And there we go. Okay. Let's drink some nice clean water. And let's have a look at that pump. Mechanical pump. Six hours for us to be able to make this. Oh dear. Okay, well we are trying to reset our sleeping schedule. Trying to. So going to sleep now would make sense. Although... No, we should we should try and go to sleep. We, we really should. <laughs> if anything, I can work on this tomorrow. So, we'll just turn off the light. And we'll see if we can get the crew working on anything else for now. Oh, they're already done with their cooking. Okay, well, let's go and bring you back. Looks like that jerky is down on the ground. Excellent, we'll take it. There's really not a lot of food that you get from that, but sure. And Ed's back from cutting wood. We're pretty much almost always going to want to grab him. Cheryl, at the moment, is making wooden beams for us. It's a process that always takes a long time. I think we're probably going to send Lysandra out again to try and do some more hunting for us. Uh, I'm just slowly but surely trying to clear a little bit of the forests around us now. So let's see. Large animals. Um, hmm. Where is Lysandra right now? Not close enough that we can't. There you are. Okay. Oh, it can be small animals. I see. I see. Right. Lysandra, you're popping back out there again. And we might as well do some small trapping too. Lisbeth, let's get that device skill up. Well, it's a new morning, and thankfully it's early morning, so we can actually, we can make do with the darkness before we head out. And believe me, we are going to head out. 80% battery. Nice, we've got a lot stored there right now. It's good. Okay, let's turn on the light. And let me see if I can remember where we're at. Mechanical pump, that's right. So, six hours for us to be able to make that uh we'll use some of the bone glue that's nearby we'll use one of the leather patches and we'll just work on this until the sun rises as soon as we've got sunrise we are going to look at heading out to do some harvesting wow we mustn't have actually slept for all that long i am relatively sure the sun has still not risen just looking at some of the shadow that we've got outside we'll just double check just by kind of moving around here a little bit no yeah we've still got shadow outside we can see that it uh, drops off. Our sense of time is a little whack. But hey, look at this. We've got our vegetable pies that we're going to snack on. Get nice and full. And we'll continue working on that pump. At the very least, everyone is getting a lesson in fabrication here. Oh, and there's that cold settling in. Just started getting it on our hands as we're finishing up with that pump. But hey, the pump is done, which is great. So let's head on over here. We can recover our trappers and our hunter. We'll just leave them for now. And we'll have a look over here. Build a well. Oh. <laughs> we need we need two more pipes. Okay. Well, as we know, pipes don't take us that long to make. But we need scrap metal to be able to do that. Okay, back at that again. And we're going to need chunks to be able to do it. So we need to go to the lumps first of all. Oh boy. Okay. Pony, smash out those two pipes for us, thank you. That's going to take him 24 minutes to be able to do. So, while that's happening, we're going to pop on over here just to see how our hunters have done. So, Lisbeth, first of all, has some experience and managed to get... Yeah, okay, that's a that's a decent amount. Lysandra, let's see how that went for you. Okay, I think maybe you got a mink out of that. Trapping seems to be better at this stage. There is a possibility if the if we actually arm Lysandra with a weapon, 
other than the spear that should be able to do better. We're just going to move these corpses up to here for now, where the rest of the offal is. And let's get that clay lamp going. Full butchery. How that cold is really starting to get to us, huh? Okay. The pelts are going to be good for a while, but it's good to know that we do have some pelts there. Your stuff is already starting to freeze outside. Good. Good. Oh, let's not be dragon. Let's also turn off that lamp. And pony's already done. Okay, that's good. We'll grab him in a moment. First of all, meat pies. Ramshackle, thank you. I think we can get some more of those going in actual fact. We've got quite a bit of scraps. Okay. Yeah, let's make six more. Thank you. Gerald, all right, into the kitchen. And now some veggie pies as well. Arturo, thank you very much, my friend. Right now, back in here, let us recover Pony. And Pony should have those pipes. And that should theoretically be enough for us to make that well now. Indeed, it is. Good, good. We'll wait until everyone's around us, just so that we can get everyone working on this. I think we're probably going to try and go to sleep again. But yeah, uh, okay, right. It's just going to be Pony and Lysandra that can work on that. All right, well, how long is that going to take? Only an hour. I'm impressed. Good work, but I think having the well out there is just going to make it getting water so much easier. We don't have to go downstairs. It's not a big ordeal. Right, yeah, okay. Let's actually try and get some sleep because I, I really do <laughs> want to do some harvesting. All right, it is the morning and we are just about ready to head on out into the world. I just want to make sure that we are going to be okay food wise. We've got lard, we've got some vegetable pies. We just want to have a little bit more clean water, which we can get, I was going to say from over here, but I think the clean water is probably moved again. That's fine. That's fine. Also, yeah, I keep forgetting to check out the pantry, don't I? So maybe let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a, that's a considerable amount of storage. I like it. Excellent. So yeah, I think we will try to uh, move some of our cooking supplies over here, like the pot and whatnot. Obviously, if we can kind of split them between here and there, just so that we have some of the food cooking abilities, because sometimes you need it for boiling and whatnot, just for general crafting. But yeah, I am happy with this. So let's see, cold, clean water. Excellent. Let's go and pour that into here. Love it. And now we have Ryan. He has the uh, pack on. We're going to jump on the back of Ryan. We obviously have Lakendra following us along. Let's see where we want to try and look. So we're obviously looking for groves first and foremost, because really trees are the only thing that we're going to be able to harvest at the moment. Although frustratingly enough, I haven't labeled <laughs> what many of the groves are. And obviously that is somewhere that we can get a lot of just one thing. Like, I don't, I don't think we've found any apple groves as of yet. We can also just look at doing some acorn harvesting. The tricky thing is that we can't harvest while we're on Ryan back. Yeah, so walnuts, chestnuts, and acorns are going to be something that we can get a lot of right now. I think I want to try and focus, if I can, on trying to go for apple trees. Yeah. Like you, for example. Cannot do that while mounted. Of course we can't. But Ryan can follow us. We've spotted a chihuahua. And we have seven frozen apples. And that's the other good thing, is that the apples are going to stay good. I think I'm probably just going to have to try and do a visual here. Just trying to look at the forest and go from apple tree to apple tree. Which is not the easiest way to do this. I guess the other way would be just kind of staying on the outskirts and just trying to see if we can spy any. But the fact that they are classified as trees, because they are, they could very well be in the many groves that we have around. Yeah. So I did note what these ones were. Alder trees and oak trees. Hickory over here. I feel like I trust myself enough that if we did have apple trees, I would have noted it as apple trees. <laughs> we'll just do a quick search for apple as well. No results found. Okay. What if I say alder? Okay, so it doesn't come up with our custom notes. No, it does. I was just spelling alder wrong. <laughs> so yeah, 
quite a few hickory groves around. So we do have three groves down here that really aren't that far away. I think we could navigate to them pretty quickly without too much trouble. So I think we're going to do that. We're going to jump on the back of Ryan and we are going to see if we can just travel on down towards there. We've got some aphids, a clay deposit, some chitin and some spiders. Obviously the spiders will have multiplied a lot. So we're going to try and see if we can go down like that, I think. And I am going to keep my eyes out to try and see if we can notice any apple trees along the way. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, pear tree. Excellent. Got some nice frozen pears. Love it. I think we'll just try and navigate through like this now. Now that we're kind of deep in the forest. And I'm just going to keep my eye out for any trees that I like. Got some ceratopsian juveniles out here. I am, of course, going to try my best not to lose Ryan through all this mess. I just need to wait for him occasionally. Oh, we still had quite a ways to go, huh? Okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll jump back on. Zombie dog spotted. We will cancel that auto move. Okay, all right. Uh, I think we've actually got some cherries here as well. Oh, no, coffee. A coffee tree. Whew. Oh boy. I have no idea where we are right now. I think we're behind the tree. Yeah, we are. Okay. Zombie dog. Right, Lakendra is close by, so ideally she will back us up here, but we're going to draw out our sword. We're just going to start to move to the side here and wait for this thing to approach. Oh, one slice does it. Okay, do we want to spend some time trying to dissect it? 31 minutes, that's not bad. Let's do it. Okay, good, good. We finished the dissection. We carefully record the creature's vulnerabilities. I like that. All right. Use that scabbard. Put the blade back away. Ryan, let's make sure that we jump back on your back there. And it looks like we're looking at dead trees here. That's a dead tree grove. Okay. Dead trees. And I think we'll just try and change the F to a capital D. And then we'll make sure we actually save that note. There we go. Okay. On to the next then. We'll just try and slide on through. And hey, look at that. Got ourselves a nice apple tree and also the walnut tree. I forgot about the coffee tree. Damn it. Okay, well, I'm sure there's always more chances, huh? Okay, we are approaching yet another grove. And we are looking at what kind of grove here? Elms. Okay. Yeah, doing this notation at the start would have saved a lot of time. But here we are. Here we are. Okay, Ryan, stay close, my friend. Right, while we're outside like this, I am going to try and just keep my eyes out. Okay, I have spotted some things. We've also spotted a giant wasp, so we want to be wary of the wasp. And also, there is a portal just to our south. So we could, <laughs> we're going to stay away from that. We'll take those pears, thank you. And... We are pretty close to the grove, but I've just spotted another coffee tree, so we're going to go and have a look at that first of all. Yes, Kentucky coffee pod. Poisonous. Poisonous, yeah. Um, well, ideally, we'll make it not poisonous, and then we'll be able to have ourselves some coffee. Let's ignore the rats for now, as long as they keep ignoring us. Is that clay up here? It is clay. Okay, and we can see what kind of trees these are now. We are looking at... Blackjack Oaks. So the bark is usable for a number of different things, so I think it's going to be good for us to keep note of that being here. We've got two more groves for us to have a look at on the other side of this forest. All right, there we go. Ryan, please stay close. Come on now. There we are. Okay. I'm just going to put safe mode on, just in case. But we are looking at these groves here, and we should also get a chance to have a look at this area that we haven't actually explored yet. More than likely, there is nothing there. Oh, you know what we could do? We could tell the Kendra to mount up. Yeah, because... Can can you still attack from Ryan back? I, th I think you can. Yeah, let's, let's just say, um, talk. Or rather, we can just shout out, right? Mount up. Uh, will do. Are you going to? You might be too big for Ryan. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, we just went past a fruit tree. And 
Yet another grove. We are looking at what here? Alder trees. Ugh, great. <laughs> well, mark them all the same. Okay, let's make our way south. Cross our fingers. And, okay. Oak trees. So, a massive source of acorns. There we are. And, seeing as we're here, I do want to have a look a little bit deeper in these woods. So we'll just see if we can clear what is currently the unknown. And at the same time, get some nice fruit. We've discovered another grove. Uh, it is a little close to a swamp though, so we want to be cautious approaching that. Let Ryan catch up to us. Okay, looks like we're hitting the grove now. And hickory trees, okay. I mean, hickory groves are useful. They are a source of salt for us, sure. Not sure we're going to have anything else here. We had some chitin over that side. We will take a few more steps back into the forest, as we don't want to be seen by the swamp. At the same time, we want to just clear the area around here. Fantastic. Well, not fantastic. That is a fungaloid. A fungaloid shambler. Let's back out and away from here. And uh, we might have to tell the Kendra not to engage. Depending on, oh, yep, stay with me, please. Because we do not want to tangle with fungaloids. No three. But I do just want to see a little bit further down this way, as we've nearly cleared the area. There's just the two squares that are down there. Uh, and that's a lot of fungal growth, so I am... Okay, there we go. We got it. We got it. We know what's there and it's nothing. Apart from a bad time, we don't want to be a part of that. So, I'm pretty happy we managed to clear those out we have managed to get some resources out of this so far 17 frozen apples and 36 coffee pots 14 pears as well it's not a lot but it's it's still an okay amount oh boy let's not accidentally walk on any more fungal growth eh? that sounds like a good plan to me so any other uh plants that we find it's just gonna have to be you know, by chance. But we've got a big forest here. There's a lot for us to see. Oh, hey, raccoons? Really? You want a tank? Really? Lakendra seems to be really chill about these raccoons. Um. Ah, oh boy. Okay. Okay. All right. Stop attack, my friend. Oh, there we go. That's enough to kind of scare them off. We are going to need to go and get Ryan, though. Buddy, where are you? Oh, crap. Shamblers. Okay, a storm for a second. There he is. Okay, come on, buddy. Let's get out of here, huh? And we'll stay on your back this time. Man, that raccoon's not giving up. There we go. Just a few slaps should be enough to scare it away. Well, I would hope, but apparently not. You silly bugger. Ah, already seeing a fruit tree across the other side here. A good sign, I might think take that and I think at this stage it might be wise for us to start making our way home ah we can't store anymore so we're just gonna have to go and start placing some of these items into the bag here ah really it's all too big to fit in the hide bag I some I somehow doubt that <laughs> all right let's just say 10 apples then huh too big one apple what else do you have in the bag right now Okay, I can put a single apple in there, fine. Ah, and there's, there were no items in there. Do I have to do this one at a time? Seemingly. <laughs> what if I said five? Too big. Too big for five, huh? I'm just intrigued if the amount is too much or what. We can put two in at a time. Okay, one more and that would be the five that we were going to put in. It seems to be no problem. This is a, an issue with putting too many. Yep, we just put three in. This is bizarre. Seven? Too big. What about four? Is that the magic number? Four is the magic number. <laughs> okay, but four pairs is too much. And three pairs is also too much. Okay, right, fine. Well, we managed to get rid of some, so that's good. <laughs> well, just keep on riding through. See if we discover anything else along the way. And would you look at that. We've made it back home. 
All right. Ryan, we're going to be tying you up here for the moment. Still have a bit of fat here that can be processed. But the fruit, we're just going to go and place into here for now. Leave that meat jerky in there too. And we'll see if they're able to, you know, cook up any of that for us. Oh, they're back from the well. Good. Okay. I do wonder where that is. Uh, we'll get everyone back from cooking. Arturo, fantastic. Those are the pies, I believe. More pies and more pies. Yeah, that's, that's a considerable amount of meat pies. We love to see it. Now, lard. Yes. Let's get some lard going. Ramshackle, you can work on that. We can just make basic fruit liver, a compote from the fruit that we've got so far. I think we'll probably just sit on that for the moment. What we're probably going to want to try and do is work on pemmican. Or alternatively, we could just turn it straight into sugar, couldn't we? And I don't think that's something that we can specifically do from here. Oh, I lie. Indeed it is. Sweet water. Yeah. I think we'll probably just turn the fruit that we've got so far into sugar ourselves, Which is something that I should probably start now, just so that I don't forget it going forwards. But we're going to put these pies into here for now. Oh, and let's not forget that there is actually more on Ryan. Let's remove all those items from the bag. Excellent. And we'll just drag them along with us. And you know what? We're going to start a nice warm fire. Oh, I also didn't check to see where the... Um, Get out the fireplace, please. Where the well is, we will have a look at that before we finish today. There we go. Nice fire. And indeed, we can make sugar. A fair amount of sugar at that. We will spend the time doing that. Although, let's actually just take off these gloves real quick. It won't take us as long, even though it'll be a little cold in our hands. And we should be able to make more than 10. This is just from one lot of the fruit. Sweet, sweet sugar. That's the first lot of that done. We'll go and eat a pie drink some water, and then we'll make it again. Ah, what is the limiting factor here? Lye powder? Ah, I see. I see. Okay, so maybe we'll just stick with what we got for the moment. I am happy with that. You know what? Can we eat a frozen pear? No, we can't. <laughs> we won't heat it up yet either. But gosh, an apple pie. That would be quite the treat. So, having a look in here, where do we think this well is going to be? It should be outside, right? That that would make sense. And there it is. We can actually see that it's a proper mechanical pump. And sorry, we just shoulder checked the ground. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Access to water. Proper, proper water. We have our windmill here as well. That's how they're making flour and whatnot. And then we just got, yeah, some frozen remains. Not bad, team. Not bad. So, as ever, we are inching closer to completing this place. There is a lot that Hilma has to do to be able to get that steam engine together, but we're getting there. The main thing is going to be scrap metal. We need a lot of scrap. And we're probably going to need more metal in general. I really thought that we had enough, but no, we are going to need more. So we're more than likely going to have to head back out into the world to explore these other craters. We've got at least two more that we haven't seen yet. And we might need to go further still if we need more of those resources. Although, now, now I'm kind of wondering, would it be worthwhile us looking at plastics more? Yeah, we would need the vacuum mold. I'm pretty sure to be able to make the boat hole. Yeah, and that needs its own charges. It's a, it's a whole ordeal. Sticking to the metal for now might be the best thing. I mean, alternatively, there is always just making things out of wood. And there will be a fair amount of the boat that is made out of wood. I think the hull at the bottom, that I want to be aluminum. And after some of the feedback that I've got from you all, I think it is going to be best for us to make it a 3x3, three three, kind of like a raft. Lakendra on the rear of it. But now I'm kind of thinking... Maybe we do want a little bit more space than that. I mean, portal storms are bad. <laughs> Very bad. But also, I, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want this project to become a massive, massive boat home. Because that's not what it's meant to be. It is meant to be transportation for us to be able to move up and down the river. To be able to explore and find people. And I think getting something bigger than 3x3, three three, well, it would impede the progress that we can make. And it would also just take a lot longer for us to make it. I think we can get... Buy with the amount of squares that we get with 
you know, from that. It would also mean that, well, only one of us would be in the center, away from the outside. But we know that Lakendra can handle herself in a fight. We might just need to get some, you know, makeshift life preservers to make sure that we don't uh, drown if we find ourselves in the water. All of those things are things to think about, but in the future. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. We're over that 100 hump now, and I appreciate you being in for the long ride. For now, I have been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay tuned. And finally, I would like to extend a great big thank you to the Legion on Patreon, who continue to make this cataclysmic content possible.